Madam President, it has been almost six months since Hurricane Irma struck Florida. And it's been about a month since we passed the most recent disaster supplemental appropriations bill. And that finally included money for Florida's fisheries, citrus growers, and communities across the state that we've been fighting since day one since the storm passed. Well, today I spoke to the Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, and I asked him to immediately release this critical funding to help the people of our state. Florida's fishermen are still waiting on their help as well. Hurricane Irma caused extensive damage to vessels, facilities, docks, equipment, and gear, especially down in the Keys. And many in the spiny lobster industry lost all of their traps. The disaster supplemental appropriations gave NOAA $200 million for federal fishery disasters like the, uh, the one that Secretary Ross declared in Florida. But where's the money? Well, let's talk about the broader impact to the oceans. Did you know that Florida's coral reef track is the third largest barrier reef in the world? It's a reef that starts south of Key West, goes all the way up the coast, all the way almost to Fort Pierce. The coral supports the spiny lobsters and the stone crabs, which are served in the restaurants around the country. This industry is so important to Florida's economy. And what the hurricane did, Hurricane Irma tossed all manner of debris around. Monroe County has already spent almost $20 million to remove over 2 million cubic yards of waste, roofs, appliances, bicycles, trailer homes, boats, and appliances. But the debris was also swept into the water where it's threatening the corals and into the canals where it blocks transportation. I want you to take a look at this picture and you will see here is one of the canals in the Keys. Look what's sitting in the canal. A whole mobile home lifted up from this mobile home park on this side of the canal, and there it is in the water. Take a look at this. So you see what's in that canal? You see out here, that's the ocean. This canal's coming right in. Now, what happens is this debris gets Eventually, some of it goes out there into the Atlantic. It gets near the reef. Some of it submerges. The wave action is sending it back and forth. And you can imagine any one of those pieces of debris knocking constantly into delicate coral that is already diseased that is already overheated because the temperature of the water rising, and you can imagine what is happening. And so uh, that, whether it's a mobile home sitting in the canal or whether it's all of this junk that's sitting in a canal and eventually goes out, this is what we need help with. Well, it's been over a month since we passed the disaster supplemental appropriations bill, why isn't it flowing? That's what I called the Secretary of Commerce this morning. 
I told him, Mr. Secretary, my request is very, very simple. Just get the money out. The money is appropriated. It's there. I said, Mr. Secretary, will you please crack the whip on Noah so you can get this money out and we can get this place cleaned up as well as those coral reefs protected from the damage that they're already uh, undergone. And then I said, and what happened in this storm is all of those fishermen, whether it is for lobster or whether it is stone crab crap, traps, they were all swept away. The poor fishermen, they don't have any traps. They need help too, and that's what this disaster appropriations bill is for. But Mr. Secretary, you got to crack the whip on them to get them going. Now, unfortunately, this is not the only issue that we are facing because Florida's citrus industry suffered over $760 million in losses from the storm. Why? Because the trees were full of the fruit that was going to be picked within just a few weeks. So along comes the storm, the winds are severe, and in Southwest Florida, some of the citrus crops were lost 100%. In fact, the winds were so high that they ended up uprooting citrus trees. As you got further north into central Florida, the groves there lost 50 to 60% of their crop. The citrus industry just cannot survive those kind of losses. And that's what we have a disaster appropriations bill for. 760 million in losses from the storm. The rest of Florida agriculture took a big hit and it's a total estimate of two and a half billion dollars in damages. And in February, we finally came through with the $3.8 billion for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Of that money, $2.6 billion was supposed to grow directly to farmers and ranchers. Well, it's March, and these folks haven't seen a dime. And so after I talked to the Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, I put in a call to the Secretary of Agriculture. I have called several times today. I have yet to connect with him, but if any of his staff is listening, there is a bottleneck at the USDA preventing this money from going to the families who desperately need it. And I will continue to call Secretary Perdue to ask him to do what I ask Secretary Wilbur Ross to do. Crack the whip on his organization to get the money flowing because that's what we passed a supplemental emergency appropriation for. Now the federal agencies need to get the money out the door. This is so frustrating because the administration knew that Congress was discussing a disaster supplemental bill way back when Hurricane Harvey hit in August on Texas, and then Irma hit, and then Maria hit. Now, six months later, most of the federal agencies are just starting to dust off their pencils and figure out how they're going to allocate the funding. What is wrong with you all? People are hurting. They are going bankrupt. You've got to get that money out. So you can imagine how you'd feel if your family's entire citrus crop 
had been wiped out and you had been holding your breath, waiting for disaster assistance funding, which finally came over a month ago. And then you were told by the folks in the agency, in this case, USDA, you were told you were going to have to wait for several more months until USDA figures out how to get you the money. No wonder people are fed up with bureaucracy. Additionally, many of our cities and counties have yet to see any reimbursements from FEMA for Hurricane Irma. In fact, many have yet to be fully reimbursed for Hurricane Matthew, which was almost two years ago. And uh, it struck, and unbelievably, all those uh, Hurricane Matthew counties that were devastated up and down on debris removal, all of the counties and the cities front-loaded, paid for the debris removal. The state of Florida missed the deadline, didn't turn it in on time. And of course, what we had to do then to go and cover the state of Florida's mistake was to plead with FEMA Forget the mistake. It's the local county and cities that need the money. And so what's happening of not getting the money out is totally unacceptable. So while we are still waiting for reimbursements from these storms, can we expect these local governments to prepare for the 2018 hurricane season that will start in just a few months, right around the corner. So Madam President, let me say it again. This is unacceptable for the slow walking, the foot dragging that's going on and getting the money out the door. I'm gonna keep pounding on this until the folks in Florida start getting the help they need and deserve. Madam President, I yield the floor.